Hello and welcome to the Physique Development Podcast. Today we are going to be going over mental health and I know that this is a health and fitness podcast and we've talked about physical health a ton and we've definitely touched on mental health, not only Alex and I's mental health, um, Austin as well, but being able to touch on how it plays into our physical health and I always have loved the term health as wealth and when we talk about that health, it does mean your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, your social health, your work environment. There's so many different sides to health and really looking at it as a full picture and being able to focus on each different aspect of it is going to be so extremely important to the quality of your life as well as what you're able to succeed and what's able to happen when it comes to life. Because when we look at our mental health, this is going to determine how we act, how we react, how we take care of ourselves, different habits we put into place. And so this was actually not a podcast that we had planned, but Alex and I felt very pulled to be able to talk about this topic. So enjoy this podcast as we kind of just go off of each other and being able to talk about mental health as a whole. So the reason that we felt pulled to pivot and and move into more of a mental health focused podcast today is because our friend Hayden had gone on his story uh, yesterday before uh, recording this and was very vulnerable about his experience within his own mental health and some of the things that he is struggling with. And we felt as though that it would be advantageous for us to share some of the struggles that we've had. Um, I know that within, if you consume all of our content from YouTube to the podcast to Instagram and those different factors. We make things very clean and it may seem as though that everything is perfect. Everything is is going extremely well and we feel that sharing some of the things that maybe we've struggled with in the past and some of the things that we we're struggling with currently will be helpful to connect with as well as potentially, you know, putting you as the listener in a position where you are are connecting in those different things. And so I just want to be more vulnerable. I know that for myself, this is something that I've struggled with abundantly, really the whole time that I've been on social media over the last um, eight years and have done a poor job of really showcasing myself and allowing myself to, I guess, show more and, and be more vulnerable. So um, I wanted to take this opportunity and take the encouragement from Hayden to be able to step out of my comfort zone. And it may not be the the cleanest episode today. It, I may stumble on my words a little bit more than I normally do. Um, but I think that it will be helpful to myself selfishly, as well as hopefully helping one of you that are, are listening. Yeah. And with, on that note, being able to talk about sleep as that was something that Hayden really touched on. And I know you personally have been struggling with sleep um, on and off. And I, I thought that it would be good for us to touch on that a little bit and what goes into why your sleep is struggling as well as what you've done to combat it um, and to help you. Yes. Um, so sleep for me is a, a big driver to dictate my overall health. I think that many of you can uh, agree with this. And also, um, my sleep is the first thing that really goes when my mental health is really starting to be in a poor position. Um, oftentimes, like my anxiety is the the big thing. And then I can put myself in the situation where I have you know, so much work going on within uh, physique development, as well as like my you know, physical health and all the things that are going on. I take a lot of that stress and, and put those things on my shoulders. And so I find myself in a situation over really the last, and I've talked about this on a couple of the podcasts, mm -hmm. over the past two or three years where I'll go very long stints um, of not sleeping well at all and just kind of um, putting myself in a situation where I'm relying on stimulants throughout the day to really carry me uh, because of the lack of sleep. And as many of you know, that is something that just continues to perpetuate the issue as well as drive up anxiety um, and, and those different factors. And so I, I think that for sleep for me is the thing that I can identify and, and uh, target more so to improve my overall mental health because multiple days in a row of, of not having good sleep is the thing that really deteriorates my, my scope or my view on things um, the most. And um, I think that it's the thing for me that I have to focus on most abundantly. Yeah, and I know that the stimulants definitely perpetuate things, but um, I, and you mentioned your anxiety, but is there normally a trigger that causes that sleep to start kind of falling back, or is it a culmination of things that pushes it to fall back? 
it's probably a, a, a culmination of things. I think that um, I, ca- so I, of myself, I care a lot what other people think and their viewpoint on myself, but I also do not care a lot also at the same time. I am, and you may be able to relate to this, and I know that you do, mm-hmm. being Sue, that um, I value a lot of what my parents have thought of me my whole life. And so what I do, I want to make them proud and I want to paint a picture of like, I'm the perfect son type situation. And so even as an adult, I've not been living in their home for over a decade and um, I still feel that way. I still feel this level of, of anxiety or concern that I'm like still painting that picture. And so with that, I also take on a lot of responsibilities that um, I don't necessarily need to of like everyone's everyone, everything that everyone has going on is also my responsibility. And like, I need to be able to fix everything. And if anything happens to anyone, I feel as though that I need to be able to care for them, whether that be financially, um, you know, in person, whatever it may be, I kind of take that burden on. Um, And so in that context, I think that that's the thing that culminates the most is the amount of things that I kind of have going on in my mind um, and and responsibilities that I feel as though that I have to take on that um, hinder my sleep the most. Because when my sleep is is crappy and I'm not able to sleep, I'm not able to fall asleep and I'm just laying there in bed, it's more of just my mind racing. And it's like my, my mind is exhausted, but my body will not like calm down type situation. And so that's the... I guess the main thing that I struggle with within my sleep, I'm not sure that I answered your question, but. That's okay. Uh, I I think that talking about that responsibility, I know you and I have had conversations of where that stems from, not only how you grew up and like what the financial state was, but also looking at what you want to be able to accomplish and how much you love your parents and your family. And it comes from this place of, you mentioned of like wanting to financially provide, but it also being that you want to have so much financial freedom that if anything were to happen to anyone in either of our families or our friends, that it would be absolutely zero problem for you to cover it all. Right. And that that's a lot to take on as not only... In general, it's a lot to take on, but it's a lot to take on as someone under 30 who also needs to take care of themselves and also is building a business. And the growth that we've had within our life in the past five years, it's been a lot of change, a lot of scary leaps that we've had to take and trust each other or trust that it's the right option to do. And that also compounds of not only, again, someone under 30 trying to figure it all out, but then also putting the pressure on yourself of, I need to be able at a drop of a hat to financially provide for anyone and everyone, worst case scenario. Yeah, I would say that a lot of the anxieties or stressors that I carry are financial. I think that um, for me, and the big thing that I had worked through within therapy was was that financial stress that I put on myself and the um, the value that I had put on every single dollar that I had ever made or, or had in my bank account and all those things. I think that um, that's something that I've gotten a lot better with, but still, uh, it, it comes at thresholds. Mm-hmm. It comes with with having a certain level of money. I find this level of comfort. And then as that money continues to grow because of the work that I'm putting in and, and I'm earning every single dollar, then I find a new you know, threshold. And now all of a sudden, the previous threshold that I had has no value to me and it's just this new threshold. And then I just continue and, and that that evil aspect to it all, which there there's the the thing that continues to keep me at least in that mindset is that there's there's good that comes from it because it forces me to <clears throat> work you know harder and and continue to chase goals and those different things um but it also has that double edged sword that it's just like a, a lack of satiation ever and also a lack of just like giving yourself that comfort or praise that you should get when you do accomplish goals, because it's something where for me, um, and I know this is for both of us as well, is that 
it's kind of like a, I have 24 to 72 hours of giving myself praise for accomplishing that goal. And then it's on to the next thing. And then it's like that goal was never a thing. And all that matters is the next thing. And I get very, you know, beat up because the next thing is generally very far away. And then it's like, I'm so far away from my goal. And now I've completely gone from, I'm happy that I accomplished that, but oh my gosh, I'm so far away from what I want to do type of thing. And do you feel like you do the opposite of if something, um, if you don't accomplish a goal or you misstep that you beat yourself up, but you're able to move on from it quickly? Or do you feel like you beat yourself up and stay in that longer? Uh, I would say that I probably beat myself up and stay in that, you know, negative headspace type situation. And I think that it also uh, is something that it's just con like my mind is constantly going. And so if one of the things that I have to work through and be very conscious of is that um, if, you know, 20 seconds of my day goes bad or one piece goes bad, I, that doesn't mean that I have to have a, a bad day in general. Uh, this is something that you have done, you know, such a great job of working with me through and being patient with me through of like not letting single things that happen dictate my entire day. But if they do, you are very patient with me and work through that with me. And so it's like any time that I talk about the improvements in my mental health or, or navigating through my own anxieties and those different factors, I lean into the aspect of just having a partner who is, you know, working with you um, because a lot of the success or improvements that I've had is in part to working alongside you and you being patient with me and, and working with me on a lot of those things. And so um, I would say, you know, working through the things that um, don't go my way or don't go exactly how I have planned them because I know that for myself, I am very structured in the sense of what I want to get done and I'm very one track mind. And then if those things don't align perfectly and it doesn't happen exactly how I envisioned, it's like um, it's the world's falling apart type mentality. And that's kind of been this whole year to be brutally honest. Mm -hmm. Like it's been one of those things that I thought this whole year was gonna go you know, very different. And uh, it hasn't in, in such a incredible way at the same time. It has been a year where I've learned so much about myself as well as so much about the uh, within, like learned about physique development and learned about relationships and learned so much things that I had to had to know to get to the goal that I have that I thought that I was just going to be able to glaze over and just get to my next goal because I I the it, it's no longer a matter of just work harder. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a, a point within everyone's life or within their career that just work harder gets them to certain levels, and then you're at a point where okay, the next level that you're trying to accomplish, it has nothing to do with you working harder. It has to do with you working smarter and, and utilizing more resources and leaning into others and trusting others. Um, and that's been what this year has been for me. Uh, and I know that with us joining you know, Legacy here and having someone who is um, working with us within the business is going to be such a challenging thing for me. Like this is gonna be super duper hard because my mentality through everything is fuck you, <laughs> I'll do exactly what I want to do. I don't care what you say. I'm always going to do what I want to do. And in this scenario, and, and this is the same thing within, you know, working with a fitness coach is like, I struggled a long time before I started working with Adam of like listening to a coach because I was like, I know better. Yeah. And, um, I think that this is something where, uh, I've, I've got to let the ego go. And I think that part of this too, is that, I, it's, it's going back to the image that others are perceiving of me in the sense that I want to always be looked at as I have everything handled. I have everything, um, correct and I don't need help necessarily. And it's not even, I guess it is a matter of, yes, I need help, but at the same time, letting the ego aspect of like, I'm vulnerable, I need help here. And I want you to be able to step in and be able to walk me through and, and kind of give me a better perspective on things so I can see what goals need to be accomplished before I get to, you know, the bigger goal that I have type thing. Um, so I know that getting into legacy is something I'm, 
very, ner- I've talked about that with you. I'm very nervous about being in and kind of letting that guard down and letting someone, you know, tell me more of what I need to do and probably a bunch of stuff that I've put off, you know, mm-hmm. doing um, because I don't want to do them or I'm scared to do them because I'm afraid to fail or I'm afraid to, um, you know, fall on my face or, or those different things. And the things that I feel the most comfortable failing with are the things that I'm, I'm good at, but then I'm, I'm stepping into another, you know, aspect of that same thing. But it's like, he's, he's basically good at it. It's just that one thing he's not good at, but in the, in the sense of like, business and those different factors, I think that, you know, within it, I've just been, I want to help people. I want to get people in the best shape of their life. And that's been literally what we've done for the last eight years. Mm -hmm. It has been one track. This is exactly how we're going to go about the work. And now we've got to diversify and and create like truly create a business and those things. And that's scary, dude. And that's scary (laughs) as shit. <laughs> like oh I, did, I don't know. It's it's something that has as um as we you know continue to talk about mental health, it's taken a, a big toll on my mental health this year. This is a, a year that I have I have cried probably the most I ever have in my entire life. Um and it's been, you know, good for me. Um because it's you know, up until this year, and I still run into this. I'm not acting like I'm Mr. Figure figured it out, as you guys can hear. <laughs> um but I've you know come from a place of like crying is not something that you do. Crying is something that um, is a sign of weakness. It is it is something that men or just you as an individual don't do. And um, I've had to work through that a lot this year, not really by choice. I'll be brutally honest. It's been more of like, this is the scenario and I've got to cry. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's been hard to accept, but also in hindsight, been so fantastic from just a growth standpoint for me. Yeah. And how much do you feel like what your expectation, and you can share what your expectation of this year was if you want to, but how much do you feel like your expectation of what this year was going to be came from like wanting to look a certain way to others that you did you do have it figured out that you're achieving the goals and you're you're on the upswing man um i so many things i I think that the one thing for for me um from a i guess a business standpoint that we're speaking to is that i i don't want to um i don't want others to see that there's you know bumps in the road I yeah. want it to seem like it's a, a a clean paved road that I have just gone a hundred miles an hour down this beautiful road in Arizona with the desert beside me, and I'm just flying. And the reality is, is that there are, are times where there's a ton of potholes. I've popped a tire or two, um, and and I've run out of gas. Um, and I think that I want to hide all of that. I want that to all be behind the scenes, and for the public view to be something that has. It's just shiny and pretty and all those different things. Um, and we, you know, I, I've, I talked about this on a couple of the other podcasts, but we brought in literally my my favorite person um, within Miguel and, and having him part of the team. Um, and I thought it, it was the missing piece to just like Explode. catastrophically blow everything up. And Which just, it kind of, it, 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 kind of. In turn, in long term, much <laughs> much slower than what my mind was because in my mind it was like Miguel's here on February 1st it blows up February 2nd <laughs> so um it it's in uh I guess I would be an idealist in that you know mm-hmm. thought process that I'm always looking at it from a very positive lens which lends me to uh a, it's good in some scenarios and in some other scenarios where I, I paint pictures like that are so negative because I get so down on myself because I, I've put some, I've put an expectation in place that was literally impossible, um, that I, I didn't understand the ins and outs of. And the whole year has been learning the ins and outs and still learning the ins and outs to be able to have that, you know, massive blow up that I was so direly, you know, wanting that I thought was just going to kind of fall into my lap. Um, and it's a different ball game now. So are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. 
And uh, one thing, if you you don't know the dynamic between Alex and I, I've talked about it a, a number of times, but he's always been the dreamer and I've been the executor, the, not the actual executor. <laughs> I can <laughs> execute tasks, not people very well. And so I am like the day to day of just doing what's in front of me. And so I don't always have like the bigger dreams, but he's helped me dream and he's helped me kind of visualize what's next. And I honestly just found out a couple of weeks ago what his expectations were for this year or what he thought was going to happen. And I was like, I was on a completely different page of what my expectation was for the year. And I was like, why didn't you necessarily share share that with me. We we need to work together to make these goals come to fruition. And he had said, like, I've always been, of, if I just work really hard and if I put my all into it, like, no one can tell me it's not going to happen. And I love that about you so much. But it also puts you where, again, you're taking on that responsibility of you've been going through this whole year expecting this thing to happen. And I've been going through the whole year expecting something else to happen. And then, like, when you're in a place of, like, those not coming to fruition, it feels really shitty as well as it's like, okay, now what's the path and what way do I go? And I think that that's important to touch on of just when you have these goals and especially the people near you and you talked about of, like, me really helping when it comes to your mental health, I, I'm I'm so glad that that's the case. But you in turn have helped me a ton when it comes to my mental health, my self-image, my belief in myself and so many different aspects. Aspects. And like you said, it comes down to like two people wanting to work together for that. Because when I look at when we first got into marriage, and we've talked about it a number of times that we just were children. And the first year of marriage was quite the just experience to go through. And with that, we learned how to lean on each other. And I'm so thankful for everything that transpired in that first year to really lead us to realize like we have to work together for this to work. And then that circles back to like our mental health, our physical health is like we have to give the other person grace. We have to be patient when they're having a hard day. We have to be there to call them out when they're not showing up for themselves. We have to do those things and challenge them and have the conversations to be able to progress in those ways. Um, and uh, another aspect here with you talking about the, you want in just that that clean path of a road. I want that too. And I, I think that another dynamic that comes in is I don't like to talk about problems until I've solved them. And and especially to the public, so to speak. And especially when I'm talking about stuff within business, because we also have a staff that I take extremely seriously to provide for and to make sure everything's taken care of. And I take the responsibility that it, it starts at the top. And so going into that, I don't want to be disrespectful and share something going on or share something that shouldn't be public information in the way of being vulnerable. So then I don't share as much. And then I don't want to share until I've solved it. And then once I've solved it, or at least taken the next step, then I'm in this place of like, well, now that it's over, like, I don't really need to talk about it. I just need to like keep moving forward. And I think that's a mechanism that I've done for myself to help with my mental health of like, okay, don't, because I, I used to talk about my problems all the time. And then I just dwelled on them and I was in them. And so you've helped me of like, don't dwell on it, like figure it out, move forward. And and then that in turn has caused me not to share as much because I also am like kind of all bumbled in my head of what all's going on or how to share it in a way that's going to be the most helpful or the way that's most respectful to everyone involved. And that's that's really difficult to try and navigate through as well as with you talking about legacy. If you don't know, legacy is a, is a business mentorship. And I, on the same page as you, have just wanted everyone to think like physique development has it together. Sue and Alex have it together. Austin has it together. They're doing it the right way. They're getting everything done. And asking for help can be very difficult. And especially in this way of like, they have to see the messy. They have to see the inside. They have to see things that we're doing wrong or we have to be told we're doing things wrong. And that's where that that ego side comes in of 
am I willing, and even within fitness coaching, am I willing to let someone truly look at what I'm doing and tell me like what I'm doing wrong? And that's hard to be critiqued in that way. It's hard to realize that you maybe weren't doing the best for other people or um, like I get into the headspace of like, you should have known that or you should have done that or why didn't you do that sooner? And that can just be really difficult to try and take on all by yourself as well as trying to put on the face that absolutely everything is okay and there's nothing to worry about um, and everything's on track to happen as I want it to. Um, so with that and with sleep, especially circling back around to that, do you feel um, like within those pressures, what are the times that you get out of that and you are able to sleep? What are the things that you either do or are aware of to get into that spot of sleep? Because your sleep isn't always awful. Um, it, it definitely has its time yeah, frames yeah. for sure. Yeah. But what does that look like for you? Yeah. Um, so when I am able to uh, keep up with my training, and I'm able to keep up with my cardio and keep up with uh, staying in contact with my friends. I would say those three things are really important to me as well as getting outside um, and getting out of my office, I think is the big thing because I can't, I mean, um, you and Miguel can attest to this is that there can be, I could go three days without walking outside of my office. Like I, I truly do have that much to do. Um, and so it's one of those things that if, if I was to to do that, and I've had seasons of my life that I have done that, um, it deteriorates me from like a mental health standpoint, physical health standpoint as well. Um, so I think that doing a lot of the things for my physical health, the things that really made me fall in love and, and have this passion for the job that I have, um, doing those things in turn, I know it sounds like duh, but in reality, like those things, putting those things back into priority, priority and putting myself first in those scenarios and not chronically just putting myself last, I think is um, the thing that I do the most. And just reaching out to one friend every single day, whether that be in in my world, I d do not like texting. Um, I'm much more of like a call or FaceTime person, um, which how is how he got me. <laughs> yeah. I startled Sue enough when we first started dating or when I was very interested in her, she was not super interested in me. I just FaceTimed her all the time. Um, not a advisable you know, route for a guy to take if they're chasing hey, it a girl. Worked. It worked. I wouldn't say that I have a, like, I wouldn't say that other people are going to have the best batting average with that. <laughs> um, but I would say staying in contact with at least one friend every single day is is important to me um, and is helpful because within our job, it's something where I'm having a lot of like one way conversations. I'm reading data and I'm giving feedback and that and then maybe one more email exchange after that with that singular person. And then it's just, you know, next person, next person type situation. And so there's not a whole lot of like true conversation um, that's happening outside of if I get to talk to you or Miguel um, during the day. And and then uh, having that one call, whether that be with a friend or with my parents is super helpful for me just because like I can have the crappiest day from a work standpoint. Um, and I'll use Hayden as the example here. But if I get on a FaceTime with Hayden and I see the boys in the, in the uh, FaceTime, I get 10, 15 minutes of that. They're acting crazy. They get me to smile. They get me to laugh. My day is is solid. Like you've walked out uh, outside. We sit on the patio every night to end our day. And I, you've known that I've had crappy days and you'll walk out to the patio and I'm smiling ear to ear. And that's the exact thing that's happened. Um, so it's one of those things that I try to prioritize as much as humanly possible for myself, just the aspect of human interaction. Because in reality, uh, like with us having moved here, we've lived here for you know 10 months. Uh, I haven't had the greatest opportunity, nor have I given the greatest effort? <laughs> greatest been effort. A few is, things on our plate. I will yeah. give you a little bit of a benefit of a doubt. I will say that yes, we sh we as both of us yes. should have made more effort. But I will say that we have been working a ton and traveling a ton. It's not like we're just sitting around at home like, oh, we never leave and we're just sitting here twiddling our thumbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, I haven't put 
a great effort into making friends here. So uh, for those of you that don't know, we moved to Ohio back to uh, where Sue is from. And I wouldn't say that Sue has this massive plethora of friends still here. No. Um, <laughs> but my I will family say, is here. I will say that my wife does a tremendously better job than I do within uh, making new friends and building friendships just in our neighborhood more so. Um, and I would, I mean, making friends as an adult is a very challenging thing uh, because your time is very limited as a, as a whole, as well as people are very busy. And so you, you don't want to be a bother. Also, do you want to make the commitment mm -hmm. of time that building a new relationship really uh, you know entails um, and those different things? And I think that you know, that's been one thing that I need to do a better job of uh, moving forward. And I know that... Um, Sue has a couple of... Uh, I have some friend things planned this yeah, week, so yeah. I'll circle back. Maybe I'll make two new friends this weekend. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but that being said, a lot of my my friends are through a, f a phone right now. So I have to you know make that effort to keep those connections and those different things. Yeah. And when it comes to mental health, if we're to reflect on like this year, or even your life as a whole, when do you feel like your mental health has been some of the best it's been versus some of the worst that it's been? I would say the the best that it has been is when I find the the groove of, of give and take and I'm not overextending myself anywhere. Um, I think that the kind of the groove for me is is balancing the like the type of individuals that I'm I'm working with I'm I'm aligned with the clients that I'm working with this is really big and I think that um, fitness coaches that are maybe listening to this can very much so resonate is that when you have a time in your your coaching career that you find the people that you're working with are just not aligned with you. It's a very draining process. Um, and I'm very fortunate to be in the place that I have such a great group right now of individuals who are very driven, um, that are uh, very in alignment with the goals. And I just enjoy talking to on a day-to-day -day basis. Like that's huge for me. So having that, and then also the factors within prioritizing my own personal health, um, as well as prioritizing the time that is decompression. And because the the times that I would say that it is the worst is when I am doing things out of, I have to almost all day rather than this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a, a give and take between I want to do this and then I have to do this. Like you're always going to have those things that are you have to and that you want to. It's not gonna always be all I wanna do these things and you're not, well, you're going to have definitely seasons where it's like, damn, dude, I have all these things I have to do. Um, but I think that the balance of those is when my mental health is the best and, and when it's the worst is the opposite. Yeah. And what I know you've mentioned some of them, okay, I'm getting my training in, um, getting my steps in, calling a friend, um, having good sleep. Also, I'm going to add to that, like getting your meals in um, is going to be huge for you. But what are some other things that you personally do for self-care that you label as self-care? Like I'll, I'll, I'll at least help you out with one. Like studying is a form of self-care for you that a lot of people might not label that as self-care and that might not be self-care for a lot of people. But for you, that is self-care. Yes. Um, studying is is big for me because it allows – so. And again, this is something that I think a lot of people will resonate with when you're whatever job field that you're in, if you're not consistently in the trenches and learning more about that thing or performing that thing, it can really um, increase the level of um, imposter syndrome that you're experiencing. And I think that for me, it's almost a, a safety net in my mind of if I'm consistently studying, if I'm consistently training, I have the least likelihood of having any imposter syndrome. Um, and that's been one thing that we have battled through a lot this year with the increase in overall content. Um, because within like almost all of the stuff that we share is educational. And I think that I've experienced a decent bit of anxiety from time to time within the content that's being posted um, of like, comments that I receive, DMs that I receive off of those where the reality is, is that 
we're just trying to help, like literally at its core, just trying to help. And if it helps one person, that's been the mission from the very beginning within taking on all this content this year is like, if one person DMs me or sends a comment or, um, you know, says that it helped them, that's all that matters. And so that's been the core mission from the very beginning, but it is still challenging to get uh, and, and I'm not saying that my DMs are like flooded with hateful messages or like you're an idiot. Um, but, you know, working through those is is a challenge at times. And then that also uh, puts yourself in a, in a anxious position because you're like, am, am I, what am I am I saying this right? Am I doing this right? It's like when we're when we're for, when we're recording six YouTube videos a week, plus all the short form stuff. And then you <laughs> publish the this, yeah, and the podcast. You publish this across so many different uh, platforms from a social media standpoint, and then you put this pressure on yourself to say everything perfectly because it is education. And you don't want to misspeak and you don't want to mislead anybody. And then you, the verbiage that you use gets like berated by one, like a, a person that I look up to or someone who you uh, like has. I would say, I guess, clout in the space or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. That sucks, dude. And it's like, mother, like, dude, I, I, f there's like 50 pieces that I made this week and I misspoke in this three second clip and you're going to like tear me apart because of this rather than like looking at it full picture and being like, he didn't, this is what he meant. I re I watched the whole video and he just misspoke in this window, but then you have people that, you know, that's also TikTok to its core. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to clip this so that I can berate you here. But I also know that that wasn't the whole video, um, side tangent, but. Well, going off on that side tangent, I think it's helpful to talk about social media when it comes to mental health, because I'll go ahead and say like. Getting, I, I think I even said it on the podcast where we said like what we learned from posting on social media every day for however long, six months, I think was the time frame. And I vocalized like I was afraid to be on social media more because I knew that it would impact my mental health. And I was taking the jump for the business and for people to get the education, like not just for the business to grow, but truthfully, there is a gap in the space and I want to fill it. And to be able to get that out there, knowing like you're going to have to pay attention to your mental health even more of how these comments affect you, of what people say about you, of how you carry yourself and how you talk to yourself. So within like being on social media more, just social media in general, like what does that do to your mental health, especially putting out all of this content? Yeah, hard. Um, very hard. I, I think that um, social media is something that I, I really enjoy as a whole. Um, but this year I've had to really do a uh, a very, I have to pay very close attention to how I'm utilizing it and uh, not spending time scrolling. And then it's very easy to to fall into the comparison game of things of, especially as we're trying to, uh, well, I'm always in the mindset of how can things improve? What can we do better? How can, uh, how can I um, word things better? How can we record things better? What are going to be the the best ways for for lighting and all the details? Far too many details that I don't need to be worrying about on a regular basis, but I do. And so all that kind of goes into when you're when you're scrolling because for me within social media, I'm just trying to get either new ideas, connect with individuals, and then you know how can we. Uh, improve in the space. And so I think that that's one thing that I've had to monitor better. That was the word I was looking for. And um, like putting the time constraints on the, uh, like on the screen time app or the portion of my iPhone um, has helped tremendously. So for me um, within Instagram, I have an hour every day that I'm able to be on there and it makes it to where I can get on and I'm not having to do a whole lot of editing on my content. So I'm just posting. And mm -hmm. then, so that's not taking a massive amount of time. Um, and then I'm able to engage and it forces me to understand I have a very limited amount of time on there. So I need to be on there doing things that are going to be productive. Um, and then 
anyone that's used the screen time app aspect is that you have an option as soon as it comes up of your time limits over, you can press whatever remind me later and then you've got one minute, 15 minutes, or you can disregard it for the whole day. And so you have to keep yourself disciplined in that time of, okay, like, do I need to actually be on here? Am I, if I get on here, what is my plan to be on here? Or am I just going to either continue to fuel my anxiety, which I do, um, or do I just need to get off of here in general? And so it's one of those things that from a disciplinary action, when my mental health is the worst, I'm constantly pressing remind me in 15 minutes. Cause it's like in my mind, it's not ignoring it for the whole day mm -hmm. and I need more than a minute, but I can just keep pressing 15 more minutes, 15 more minutes, not a big deal. And so, but when my mental health is the best, I'm really sticking within that one hour and TikTok's the same. I have it for, I think I have that one shorter. It's like yeah. 45 minutes or something. Um, but with that, I think that having those constraints on it is extremely helpful for me because there's not a whole lot that I benefit from when I'm scrolling. Yeah, I agree um, I think that there's benefit in connecting and that's very different if you're going through commenting, DMing and, and reaching out to people, giving people praise, all those things. I think that's way different than just aimlessly scrolling um, your feed. Or trying to like figure out drama or what yeah. someone's taught. I found myself like for the first time in a while getting into a little bit of a rabbit hole where I clicked on one person and then I was trying to figure out what there was like kind of a cryptic message. And then I went into it and was like looking through all of these. And I was like, I just spent far too much of my time worrying about someone else's life and like digging into it when I have things that I need to focus on myself. And I, I realized those times that I'm focused on other people's lives versus focused on my own life, how different I feel and how much more fulfilled I feel focusing on my own life. Yes, I still like to interact and communicate with people, but that wasn't interacting or communicating with people. It was just spending time on Instagram. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and learning a lot, I absolutely love to hear it, but maybe you feel like you can't apply it perfectly, no worries, we got an app for that. Go ahead and check the show notes or the description box and there will be a link to go and check out the Physique Development Training Club. This is an app that is going to give you exactly what you need to progress within training with three, four, and five day splits as well as home and gym options complete with a timer in there videos to the training and everything else you need to be successful. So I can't wait to hear how much you love it. So with that, how does it feel within spending all of this time, money, and resources on content and then it possibly to not be getting the views or the recognition or likes that you feel it deserves? That's been tough. I think that um, when you put as much effort and you put as much time and, and money into it as we have, um, you would hope that everything blew up. Yeah, everything was uh, went viral or what have you. And the reality is, is that we don't post viral content. It's mm -hmm. educational content. It's things that are meant to help people. It's meant for for saves and and uh, shares and those different things. Um, and so I think that that's been an, an interesting um, component. I think that continuing to repeat to myself, and I have to do this sometimes on a day-to-day -day basis of just like, your mission is to help one person. Like, did this post do this? Every single post does that. I, I know for certain, whether that be for uh, someone reaching out and telling me or it being like, no matter what, this helped someone type situation. Like if one person saw it, which one person is going to see it, um, it, it helps someone. And so um, that has been a, a big shift as well. And I think that that's also something from a ego standpoint of, um, you know, everything that we do is, is so, so clean and, and well done. And, um, I feel that when posts don't do well, I, the other people in the industry like make fun of me or make fun of us because it's like, look at them. They, you know, put so much time into this and it still doesn't do well. And that is something that I have to bring myself back on because I can get myself kind of sucked down that rabbit hole um, of thinking that. And it can be very, you know, it, it, it can be very challenging for me to work through, um, but I have to, you know, consistently remind myself. And um, it's easy when when I have a string of posts that are banging, you know, mm -hmm. they're all getting views, they're all getting likes, they're all getting saves, they're all getting comments. Um, it's the, the test is when I have a string of posts that are like, 
I'm, I, and I'm in it right now, actually, of like, these ain't doing so hot. And I'm posting them like, this This is going to bang. Like, this one's going to do it. People are going to connect with this one. This one's going to get a lot of shares. And then it's just, you know, crickets in the grand scheme of things, right? Um, so I think that that's something that uh, is going to be a forever battle type situation. Um, and you're also just kind of in this in this space of just like, what when's it gonna you're like seeking this when's it gonna click feeling or like when's it all going to just all fall into sync and i think that um that time no matter how much wishing and praying that you put into it that's gonna click when when you've earned it type situation yeah um and i think that getting out of the thought process of wishing and hoping and trying to figure out when it's going to happen and just going about your uh going about your task going about your day-to-day -day work and just checking the boxes is going to get you to that point um and I know that but it's something that I have to constantly remind myself of yeah and one thing I'll even know is like the posts or reels of mine that have gone the most viral or like gotten the most views off of anything haven't helped me yeah. or the business as much yeah. as some of the ones that have done less. Like yeah. I've had ones that have been over a hundred thousand. Alex has had one that's been millions. Mm -hmm. Um, but like those haven't gotten me followers, they haven't gotten me leads, they haven't gotten me like tons of money or anything like that. <laughs> but there's posts that do a lot lower. Like I had one that it really didn't get that many views or saves, but I got like 12 inquiries off of a post within like three hours and all of them signed up. And if I gauge my success off of everything has to have this number attached to it within like saves, comments or whatever views, then that puts me in a place of only looking at content in one way of the views have to be high. And I think I also do it of like, if someone comes to my page and doesn't know me, doesn't know physique development, I not only want to have the authority and the industry. And no matter what anyone says, if something has more followers or that blue check mark or whatever, you're kind of like, oh, I should probably pay attention to this a yeah. little bit more than like, oh, this is just like some fitness account, just like everyone else's. So I, yes, I want that authority. And with that, I know comes a certain number to a certain degree, but I also want to be able to um, like just reach more people because I do feel it is good content. It's good quality content. And that's why I sometimes get frustrated when something that's really kitschy or like just a trending sound and it doesn't offer any help to anyone, then it goes viral. And I'm like, that that didn't help anyone. But that's where I feel that validation or that affirmation that that was a good post. But it that's not the met like the ruler I need to measure on. And that's hard to like work through mentally as well. Yeah. I would say, I mean, speaking of my most viral post, it has like 1.6 or 1.7 million views on it. It's a, it's a, like a stitch of me poking fun at, um, like Chris Bumstead and the raw guys talking about a pull down variation. And I will say that I probably did gain quite a few followers and I got a handful of, of inquiries that I did end up getting on calls with. And those guys <clears throat> just wanted to look like Chris Bumstead as if I had like the tool to make that happen. And I was like, bro, that's not, that's not my job here. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it wasn't super useful. I can assure you it was more of a waste of time than anything. Yeah. Um, and I'll just speak before we close this out and we can do a, a, a second part, so to speak. Or you just... guys, you guys probably want to learn a little bit about Sue. This is, this is how <laughs> one way that Sue likes to, um, shift the attention and doesn't, maybe she doesn't necessarily want to talk about it a whole lot today from a mental health standpoint of her own. Um, but she does a really good job of having the other person talk in conversations. <laughs> no, I, I don't mind talking myself. Um, I like, just talking about what all's going on. We had a client recently in town and I did the interview with her and I felt like I definitely could have improved. And I kind of wish that I could just call Mulligan and re-record it and get it done, but that's not possible. She's in a different state. We can't just fly her back just to record a podcast because I didn't feel like it was my 100%. And that's difficult too, of putting out content that I am like, this is good, but it's not 
I'm not performing the absolute best I want to. And that's even been something, and I've expressed it to you in Austin, of it's been difficult for um, not only me coming out of prep, but even before when we did videos in 2020, as well as before I was leaner in prep, like being the model for a lot of the videos, I feel a pressure to always be in shape, not to catch a bad angle of me, because if someone sees my stomach hanging out or they see something on my, my like there's extra fat in an area, or I just don't elude health and fitness and someone who knows what they're doing, then someone's not going to take our content as seriously. So I hold responsibility of I need to be in a certain shape or look a certain way or people aren't going to pay attention. And that's been difficult for me. Um, but then also kind of coming into this place where my job and responsibility has changed so much, where I went to school to do broadcast journalism, and I spent all of high school and all of college on broadcast journalism and learning the ins and outs of being a like on the news and then being pivoting and being like, I'm learning everything about fitness and feeling behind because there's so many people, Alex included, that have exercise science majors. And so I just always felt behind of I need to learn more to catch up with these people because I'm not at that place and people aren't going to take me as an authority until I get to this place. And then now pivoting again of into business. And I feel very, I don't want to say like unsure of myself. I feel sure that I'm going to figure it out, but it's very scary to be taking this step and now having to learn a whole new industry, even though, yes, I still have to know fitness and all of that. But now I'm having to show up as a completely different version of myself because Sue as a coach looks very, very differently and has different responsibilities, needs, and wants and has to act a different way than Sue as a business owner and Sue as like a leader of a company. And that's it's really been difficult of not only transitioning postseason of figuring out who I am outside of Sue the competitor, but I've always been very sure not to label myself as like just the competitor. And that's been helpful within the transition that I haven't just been the competitor to so many of you. It's been a part of my life. Um, but like then transitioning into like Sue the the business sue. Um, and that's uh, hard to take on. And I, I want the responsibility and I want to do right by everyone. But then having this pressure that I'm I'm putting on myself and rightfully so in some degree, but too much in other degrees of like, it's on me. And it, it is on me. But I also have a team and I'm not so full of myself that I think every action I do is uh, immediately like going to depend on everything else. But I do understand, again, like it comes from the top and how I show up matters and I can't just not do something because I don't want to do it. You still have to show up in those those aspects. So that's been something that I've been figuring out and I've been transitioning through as well as all of the post-show feelings, not only about my body, like a reverse in, in general is difficult, but I also wanted to use this time to fine tune some of my interview skills because I know that we are continuing the client series and I want to get better and better and I want to to study what I'm doing wrong, so to speak, and do it right. And to that's a exciting feeling as well, even though it's scary because I want everything to be perfect. I'm I like literally my mom will tell you from like kindergarten, I have been a perfectionist. I remember she was filling out this sheet for my teacher. The teacher had sent it home with the uh, with us to give to the parents. And it was like to tell you about your child. And it was like, what's something I should know? What's something that they love? What's something that they hate? All of this. And she was writing out something and she had to cross it out. And she was like, she made a little star and she was like, if Susanna was looking at this, she would hate that I didn't get a new piece of paper and start over, that I crossed it out instead because she was using pen. And I like that's just the epitome of me is like I am a perfectionist. I want everything to be perfect. Um, and so that's been like a transition away from it's not perfect, but you can improve. And so that's been really positive for me. And even within training of us training together more frequently, like you've seen me like studying 
you training, watching back video and like with having clients or training with Miguel of like, you've been putting me in situations where I have to fail to a certain degree to learn from those experiences. And that's been really, really positive for me. And it, it's exciting for me because I'm understanding that it's not going to be perfect. I just need to learn from the situation. I would say that's like the biggest thing I've taken away from this year, especially with how the competition season went. It's turning those L's into lessons because my goodness, did, could I have just taken those in spiral? Could both of us just taken those and spiraled with them. But I feel like we were really able to apply and learn from them. And that was so rewarding that like now I'm taking that into other aspects of my life, which has been really great. Um, and the only other thing that like I personally wanted to touch on when it came to mental health and wanted to bring up in this conversation was just being able to talk about like if you have a new diagnosis or a new medication. I have multiple clients that are figuring out medications that need that are going to work for them or not when it comes to their mental health and they're having to go through multiple medications. Their physiques are going through changes because of medications. Their health as a whole is going through changes because of the medication, whether positive or negative. And that's really trying to go through. And I this year got a new diagnosis of having ADHD and that's been really interesting and hard to work through of figuring out myself as the like uh, diagnosis as well as introducing medication and trying to like navigate through what life looks like now. And that's a difficult thing to do. So if you are listening to this and if you have gone to therapy or you've gotten a diagnosis or you're figuring out medication, like I just beg you to be patient with yourself because therapy is hard to go to and it's hard to take that step. Starting medication is hard to do and it's hard when it fails or when it's not the right medication for you. But I will go back to that same Thomas Edison quote I used in a podcast or so ago of like, you're not failing. You're just finding one thing that doesn't work. And that's getting you a step closer to something that does work. So like keep trying medications, keep taking inventory of how you feel and keep showing up for yourself in these situations that feel so, so hard because it is worth it to figure it out. And it's worth it to put the time in and it's worth it to share it with others because like the best my mental health has ever been is when I've been just so bare to Alex about where I'm at or to Mackenzie, which has been a huge help of just like, this is where I'm at. And oftentimes I'll say like, I don't need you to fix it. I don't need you to do anything. I just need to tell you like, this is where I'm at right now. And that's been so, so helpful just to like care about myself and to know it's worth it and then to have that care reciprocated from people that I care about so much is so special and that's why I'm always in the realm of like the more you share the more transparent you are and the more communication you can have with people that you care about and you know care about you it can only help because like the closeness and the like everything that I felt from you this year specifically, I mean, of course, every other year that we've known each other, we've grown and evolved. But like this year, it's literally been like us till the wheels fall off. Like it's you lean on me. I lean on you. I care about you. Like you have the most grace from me. You have the most compassion from me. You'll often joke like, how do you have this patience with me or how do you do it? And it's because I get the same in return most of the time. So <laughs> I get the same. I truly do get the same in return. I just had to make a joke. Yeah. I, I get the same in return of like, you care about me and you're going to be there for me, even if you're also having a hard day and maybe we butt heads that day and maybe we have a misunderstanding. Like I have so much trust and love and like this is the person that is there for me and wants me to succeed and wants that for me. And that's been huge for me being able to like be in a better health space because I can share those things with you and I know that you're there for me no matter what. And that has been so, so instrumental as a whole. So I was not trying to dodge talking about myself. <laughs> I just do think that you, as you shared at the beginning, have struggled with being vulnerable and I wanted to give you the space to do so. And things that I'm learning about myself is sometimes I either monopolize conversations or I just like to talk a lot and that doesn't lead 
lead me to have the best conversations because I'm not focusing on the other person as much. So it's not, it was not only selfish for me to fine tune my interview skills, but also to be able to try to not talk as much and to not monopolize the conversation and to give you the space to share because I know it's helpful. And I know that just from social media of us being on social media more this year, I've loved, and I talked about it before, I was a little jealous of so many people seeing you as you, which has been so special because like, and we've talked about it before, you're the person I know the most intimately. And I know the most of like, things that you don't want other people to see. I know the most of you and I love you the most out of anyone. And same goes for you. You've seen like my messy, you've seen the inside, you've seen it all. And you're the person who loves me the most. And that's so special. And I want other people to see that not only to want that for themselves, but also to be that for someone else because it's not one way at all. We have to show up for each other and we have to be willing to go through the other person's mess to like end up on the other side. Yeah. So to summarize, I was not trying to ditch out. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> um, well, we'll go ahead and wrap it unless you have something else you wanna mention. No, I think that um, I, maybe we can, I don't know if like doing this more consistently, but having more of like just a sit down conversation with the two of us, if you guys are still listening and uh, are interested in hearing more of this just from Sue and I to kind of dig into, let us know uh, in the comments if you're watching on YouTube or shoot us a DM on Instagram. Um, that'll be super helpful and we'll make it happen if you guys enjoy it. Yeah. And when we ask for like comments or DMs or something like that, yes, it does help our channel and help us grow. So if you are like, they put out great stuff, I want other people to see it. Yes, giving reviews, thumbs up, your watch time on a video all helps. But also back to what Alex said, like we're about helping that one person and hearing your feedback, hearing from you guys and knowing the impact that we're making also helps us continue to make the, that impact. And on those hard days, I know I've gotten messages before of like on the days where I'm like, why am I putting this much effort into this? And then like getting a message from one of you is so, so special. So when we ask this or we prompt for it, it's it's to help, it's to grow, it's for ourselves, and it's to interact with you more uh, as a whole. So thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next one.